Hi, I'm Tom Marks with the Marks Law Firm in Orlando, Florida, and welcome to the Healthy Family Law Attorney. Today I have another question from a viewer, and they ask the question, what should I bring to the initial consult with the attorney? So I have 10 suggestions for the viewers or for somebody coming in for an initial consult that they might want to consider. First, number one, they might want to bring a list of written questions. Oftentimes, a client or a prospective client in the initial consult will say, man, I think there was something else I wanted to ask you, but I can't remember what it was. Well, I think if you prepare a little bit ahead of time before you come, you write down those questions, that'll really help so you don't miss anything. Number two, and this may sound a little strange, but I think oftentimes I find this to be helpful to the client, and that is to bring a close, trusted family member or friend that will help you remember a lot of what was said, okay? So oftentimes they're not as emotionally distraught and they're perhaps sometimes better able to listen to some of the answers given and they can actually provide some input to or maybe ask questions that you and uh, that person had talked about before coming to the initial consult that they might remember. I will say that I always require a written waiver from the client when there is a third party in the initial consult and that's just because technically from a legal standpoint, it waives the attorney-client privilege when there's a third party, uh, not part of the law firm or something in the consult. But I've never had it backfire. I've never had it a problem. Uh, typically, you know, you bring your mother, brother, sister, and they're gonna be supportive of you. Okay, number three. This may sound strange too, but bring your story. This is something that's really important. I mean, you can talk with a family member or friend about it, try to boil it down to the most relevant facts, you know, from the date of the marriage, the big, big picture things, kind of like, um, I don't know if anyone's ever watched, it's an old show from when I was a kid, so I'm, I'm gonna date myself, but it was called Dragnet. And Sergeant Friday would go to the door, he was a detective and um, he'd start asking questions and the person would start rambling on with some long protracted story. And he would say, ma'am or sir, just the facts, okay? So try to come in as objectively with your story as possible, hitting the most important facts. You know, I wanna know about the kids, I wanna know about finances, I wanna know did you give up your, your career or your job to raise kids, to, you know. A lot of that will be, become uh, very relevant in the case. All right, number four. Okay, you don't need to bring in all of these documents but having an estimated value of your assets. And I'm talking about the big picture assets, the marital home, the cars, do you have retirement accounts? Do you have bank accounts? Do you have any sig significant or valuable jewelry or other collectibles, um, toys like boats, ATVs, you know, that kind of stuff that might have uh, some value, artwork, whatever. Okay, number five. Same thing, but for debts. I wanna know what is the estimated uh, debt load on the house? What's the mortgage balance? What are the balances on the credit cards? Are there loans on the cars? Do you have any HELOCs, home equity line of credits? Other debts like that, that I can then look at and go, okay, now I know ba the basic uh, big picture assets and debts, and I can give you a net a value of the marital estate, and we can start talking about an equitable distribution plan there. Okay, number six. Okay, these are some actual documents. They're not absolutely necessary, um, but they're very helpful if you do bring them in. First is uh, your most recent pay stub. And if you can get your spouses or significant others, most recent pay stub, then I can start looking at things like the child support um, guidelines for you to figure out what 
child support might be. There's a lot of other factors that go into child support, not just the incomes of the parties. I've done prior videos on how child support is um, calculated, so we could go in and look at that. Uh, next is number seven, and that is tax returns. Those are just filled with important information. And if you can bring the last three years of tax returns, all the better. That shows a history, that shows like we're filming this in 2021. So that would be, uh, we have just filed back in April or May, depending on when you uh, filed your uh, taxes this year, uh, the 2020 taxes. 2019, 2018 would be great. Again, not absolutely necessary, but it could be very helpful. Depends on how long your uh, initial consult is too, because typically they're an hour long, so it's hard to get all of this in in an hour, but that's something you could also leave with the attorney that they could look at further um, if you don't get to it in the initial consult. Okay, number eight. This is where the attorney, like my firm, we always email the client a questionnaire or a form to complete that has all the relevant information that'll really make the initial consult go much smoother and quicker. And that is like date of marriage, date of separation, if that's relevant, um, names and ages of the kids, um, if your uh, spouse or significant other has uh, an attorney, their name and so forth. And I have a checklist in there about the level of um, anger and conflict and other things in the marriage, which helps gives me a good gauge of where we are in the marriage and whether, you know, is there gonna be a possibility of talking about reconciliation or is it gonna be high conflict, divorce and that kind of thing. All that is really important. Fill out that and bring it with you to the initial consult. Number nine, I always say, bring with you either someone to take notes or something for you to take notes on that you'll have and keep that you'll know where it is. Certainly we have uh, yellow pads that you can write on, but if you have a notebook or something that you like to keep things in that you wanna take some notes in, perfectly fine, do that, bring that, and that's great. Finally, number 10. 10 is the ability to get started right away if that is something that becomes important. I recently shot a video on whether it's of any value to be the first to file in a divorce case. And there were some answers, yes. If you're coming up on some deadlines, you're gonna reach certain milestones like a seven year or 17 year marriage, then alimony becomes a significant issue because 17 years you get long-term and permanent alimony becomes a presumption. So you wanna be ready to move forward if that's the case. Um, also, if your spouse is running up debt and you want to stop being responsible for that debt when you file the petition, if you want to get started right away, there is the date of filing of the petition and any debt that's run up after that is, is not marital debt, not your responsibility. And there's some other reasons for that. So uh, you might want to think about uh, bringing the ability uh, to get started to financially provide uh, the retainer or the positive trust balance as we uh, uh, do in our firm, which um, I've, all, I've said in prior videos, is refundable at any time for any reason, any unused portion. I don't want you to feel bound to the firm. I want you to be free. You know, you, if you reconcile, it's refunded. Um, if you um, don't like the smell of my cologne, for any reason, whatever. Try not to wear too much cologne. Anyway, those are the top 10 factors, top 10 uh, things to bring with you to an initial consult. I hope this is helpful. I hope you found value in it. If so, hit that like button. Love it if you'd subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future content that we have coming out every week, every Wednesday, every Friday. We have new videos coming your way. So I hope You've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed providing this content. I'm getting a lot of questions and comments from viewers. If you have any, please leave those below and I will see you next time.